All right, just got done storming here. And it got me to thinking, um, there's regularly, I see posts of people commenting on how they lost a pump and then they lost a bunch of fish because they didn't know the pump was out. It went out middle of the night. They didn't know it until the morning. Um, as far as our ponds go, you're going to have a failure. It's not a matter of if, it's when. You can spend all the money in the world on the best equipment and the best design. It's going to fail. Hopefully later than sooner, but eventually, I don't care if you have a fully stainless steel welded everything pipe system, it's going to fail. That is, since it may not fail until a couple generations down the line, but nevertheless, they're going to fail. When I build a pond, I always try to build for successful failures. There's certain steps you can take knowing that a system is going to fail to mitigate your loss. Um, the first thing is a lot of people that use this this piping right here and it's it's garbage I will never ever use this stuff outside of a pond ever um, it's readily available it's cheap it's light it's flexible and it makes it a real attractive option for a lot of people the problem is these PVC ribs are just there for to hold its shape the actual thickness of the plastic right there it's a sixteenth of an inch and it's a soft plastic. You can literally take a screwdriver and just punch a hole right through these ribs. So I use this stuff, but only internally in a pond. So if it fails, there's really no loss because your water's still gonna be in the pond. Um, if you need a flexible option, this is the way to go. This is Tiger Flex, which is a brand name, but it's just, it's a flexible semi-rigid PVC. Um, not as flexible but you can see the difference in the wall thickness and as long as this stuff is uv protected either buried or painted um you'll get 30 years out of it minimally so if you need a flexible option just spend the money and do this don't use this stuff outside of a pond ever there's a uh, popular diy fish person who is the self-proclaimed king apparently um, he was using this on his 2,000 gallon arowana tank and about eight months into the build this ruptured and drained half the water and flooded his gallery etc etc. Just don't use it, it's junk. Um, I use it in here. <coughs> Let me turn off my aerator. I've got a length of it in here going from my retro bottom drain. Coming over to the pump over here that runs it. It's internal in the pond. It doesn't matter if it fails, nothing's gonna happen, the water's still gonna stay in the pond. I also use a small length of it that runs from the top of my waterfall over here. I don't think you can see it. But it runs from the top of my waterfall here down and it feeds the bog. <coughs> There's no pressure in it, it's just a gravity flow system. And again, if it fails, the water is just going to run down and wind up in the bog anyway. Anywhere outside the pond, I run either the Tiger Flex or hard piped. So, your filter systems are basically a life support system for your pond. And redundancy is the key there. Because you're going to lose a pump. A good pump will last you four, five, six, ten years but eventually it's going to fail. There's a lot of cheap China pumps out now. Um, they're cheap, they're efficient, they work, but realistically you're gonna get two to five years out of them. And that's fine as long as you have a redundancy system so when they fail, you don't lose your fish. So I have three systems running on this pond. Uh, the first is my skimmer right here. So skimmer runs out pumps up along, goes through my waterfall. If that system were to fail, say hypothetically I get a rupture in my line, my waterfall, something shifts, I get roots and it's spilling out, that water is going to stop when it gets to the bottom of that weir door. 
as soon as it gets to the bottom of that weird door, this, the pump is now starved for water and it's not pumping any more water. So if that life support system fails, the worst outcome for this pond is I'm going to lose two inches of water. And they won't know any difference. That'll, this other system will still be running. My airstone will still be running. The airstone is a life support system on its own. So my second system is my retro bottom drain. So my retro bottom drain picks up from down there, goes over to the submersible pump, goes through a leaf basket, then runs into my three drum barrel system over here. This system here is the most detrimental if it should fail. That pump is sitting in about two feet of water. Eh, 18 inches in that corner. So, worst case scenario, if that were to fail, if there was a failure in my drum system up here outside of the pond, that pump is going to starve itself for water after 18, 20 inches of water loss. Now, 20 inches of water loss is bad, but this pond is four feet deep. They still have over two feet of water. They'll be fine. Um, not an ideal situation, but I will not experience any loss. They'll have two feet of water to be in still. <clears throat> They're good to go. <clears throat> I see a lot of people that have pumps sitting on the bottom of their pond that then feeds a filter, a waterfall, whatever. That's probably the worst case scenario ever. If you have a failure in your piping or the waterfall or the filter, you are literally going to suck all the water out of the pond down to the last inch or two and you're going to lose everything. A better solution, set your pump at a higher spot in the pond, run a piece of hose down to either a retro bottom drain or even just put, you know, put a grate on the end of a hose for your pickup down there but at your pump up here that's sitting in, sitting in the shallower section drill a small 3 16 hole somewhere on the suction side of the pump what this does is once the water gets down to that hole it's going to let air into the pump it's going to cavitate the pump and the pump will stop pumping water anyone who's ever had a problem priming a pump because it had air in it you watch this thing sit there and just cavitate and gurgle and it doesn't pump anything. And then when you finally get the air purged out of it, the air pocket is about the size of a Ziploc bag and you can't believe that completely stopped your pump. All you need is a very small hole on the suction side. It's got to be on the suction side of the pump. So in my instance, I've got a real small hole drilled in the top of that leaf basket lid. So when the water gets down to the top of that leaf basket lid, it's going to suck air and stop the pump. So if that system were to failure to fail, I'm losing 16 inches of water out of this pond. That's my worst case scenario. My third life support system is my air stone right there. If I were to lose both pumps simultaneously, my waterfall pump is moving about 6,300 gallons an hour. My barrel system's running at 3,100 gallons an hour. If I were to lose both of those simultaneously, this air stone will support all the life in this pond. Not indefinitely, but surely long enough for me to replace my pump or make other arrangements. Now I have probably a dozen spare pumps on hand, but most people don't. Um, power outages are another big problem that I see a lot. People lose power and then they're fish. And I'm sure most people, like me, don't have five generators on the property because, well, you're probably normal people. Anyway, <clears throat> it's wildly impractical for most people to hook a generator up just to run their pumps. However, what will work, <clears throat> this air pump <clears throat> only uses 20 watts. It's a Danner AP20, 20 watts of power. So, you could go buy yourself a $50 power inverter and a car battery and you could literally run this air pump off a car battery and a cheap inverter for probably a week and a half if not more it only uses 20 watts of power 20 watts of power is the equivalent of three nightlight bulbs 
So a good safety backup, if you experience power outages a lot, go buy a cheap inverter and have a spare car battery sitting around. Or realistically, you can hook the inverter to your car battery and plug in your aerator. Um, yeah, this stuff is going to fail. You just have to plan for a successful failure. And redundancy is your number one thing. If you have, if your pond is sitting on a single pump, no air stone, nothing else, if that pump goes out, that is the only life support your fish have, is that one system. My pond here, this ha that has three life support systems. The odds of me losing all three of them simultaneously is pretty slim. And I have extra air pumps and pumps, but most people don't. So, it's not a matter of if your pond's going to fail, it's when it's going to fail. So, plan accordingly, so when something does fail, your fish don't. Later.